Today, I've got a look at a pretty big breakthrough for AI video, and it's one that really does smash down a lot of the walls that have been holding us back in terms of control of subjects and locations. Plus, I've got two, dare I say, game changers from Adobe. Look, I can already see you Adobe haters in the crowd, like gritting your teeth, but these are pretty big, and one of them is open source. All that, plus a couple of quick hits from Minimax, Runway, and Kria. All right, let's kick the tires and light the fires. First up, we have DAS, or Diffusion as Shader, 3D Aware Video Diffusion. This is a pretty big deal, but I think in order to understand why, it might be a good idea to explain and define a few of the concepts here. I am gonna keep it on the simple side, otherwise, you know, this whole thing's gonna become as dry as an Applebee's meatloaf. That said, if you go to Applebee's and order the meatloaf, I mean, that's on you. So broadly speaking, AI images and video are generated via a method called diffusion. It begins with a random spattering of static and then will generate an image or a video based off of whatever you text prompted it. In human terms, it's a bit like, you know, finding some wild mushrooms in a field, eating them, and then staring at some clouds for an hour or so. Uh, you're going to see some things. So one of the inherent problems that we run into with AI video, and in particular image to video, is that the model is trying to animate and generate based off of 2D knowledge. Broadly speaking, it generates a 2D image based off of the previous frame, and, you know, the model does its best to try to keep everything consistent. But the model isn't inherently aware of, you know, 3D details like depth, lighting, and movement through the scene. DAS's solution to this involves shaders. Again, I am being very basic here, but uh, shaders are the thing that I guess probably most easily understood in video game terms that take 3D assets and control how they are lit, colored, and textured. Shaders, at least in a game engine, will also know, you know, where a subject or character is within the 3D scene. So taking those two ideas and sort of smashing them together, uh, what DAS is doing here is taking an input image and then adding essentially like 3D tracking points to that image. From there, it not only has information on what your subject is, but you know where it exists within the environment as well. So by utilizing the power of hallucination, you know we can do some stuff like in these 3D turnarounds, uh, which look pretty solid, like the model isn't hallucinating, warping out all over the place. And because DAS has depth measurements as well, we can see here in this like magical floating banana here um, that the model understands where the banana exists in 3D space. So the shadow is actually correctly aligned to the light source. So this is how DAS sees a 2D image. And to note, this isn't Gaussian splatting. This is all point based. Um, but as we can see here with all of this 3D data, we can get some pretty solid up, down, left and right movements. Now to note, I know that these examples are not like the most dynamic. This tends to happen when we see these sort of demo pages set up. Um, but in terms of, you know, the actual camera movement on everything, yeah, it looks really rock solid. But where you see the benefits of that 3D data is when you generate outputs that are, I don't know, like a hyperactive eight-year-old with a camcorder that's hopped up on too many pixie sticks. Another interesting result here with uh, what I presume is actual footage, it's fine, it's harder and harder to tell, um, of this boat going by alligators here, and then, you know, you generate out a version of it where it looks like the camera person has just been bit by one of those alligators. And although we can see a bit of a resolution hit in terms of the DAS output, um, yeah, it, no, I mean, it still looks pretty good, but I think the real powerhouses come in on the video to video side. Uh, as we can see here, just taking like a, a 3D mesh of some characters and applying DAS through them, we can get some really nice sort of animated stylistic looks. The upside here is that you can take one of these gray mesh guys and apply a flux depth to image uh, image uh, over it uh, to get, you know, some really pretty impressive results. I will say that there is still a bit of an issue with like kind of like the floaty character thing. So uh, in this case, maybe just avoid dancing full body shots. So if you're planning on making your like animated Bollywood dance epic, well, I mean, you might have to wait a couple more months. But where things get, in my opinion, super impressive is on the video to video front. So once again, taking Sir Ian McKellen here and using a flux depth to image reference, uh, you end up with this guy. That is pretty crazy good. Another example here of this kid clearly writing a love letter uh, while this girl is correcting all of the grammar. So I do know that there is a little bit of some wonk here in her legs. Uh, but other than that, man, it's it's pretty, that's pretty rock solid. Cars and boats both look pretty impressive. I will say that there's a little bit of a problem with like the water physics with the boat over here. And at points, the car, uh, you know, in terms of its actual physics don't feel quite right. But 
they do note the model's limitations. It is like a weird dance between what your input video is, what your reference image is, and what your output is going to be. Code for Diffusion of Shader is set to release before February 10th. That said, the idea behind this, that being you know 3D merging with AI video is something that I have been saying for a while, we're going to be seeing a lot of in 2025. So I'll keep an eye on this one and I'll let you know when and where it pops up. Moving on from Adobe, we have TransPixar, the Pixar movie that is more than meets the eye. I, sorry, sorry. This is actually super cool. This is text to video generation with transparency and it's open source and the code is available right now. Now, while I think that most of us know how transparencies work, just in case, uh, this basically allows you to generate up video, essentially without a background so that you can, you know, pop it on top of another video layer. Once again, I know that our outputs here aren't, you know, like super impressive in particular, uh, motorcycle guy here is a bit of a mess. But I am actually really impressed with the white dandelion seen through the magnifying glass there in that it's actually tracking the transparency through the magnifying glass as well. So, well done. Once again, even though the video output here, adorable as this guy is, isn't the most impressive thing that you've probably seen today. The fact that this is open source does mean that it can be taken and trained up. And where ultimately I see this being really useful is in things like explosions, cool transition effects like this, you know, like water splashing across the screen and even more explosions. Explosions, they're great. So this could be a really standout feature for Adobe Premiere because they are planning on integrating the Firefly video model into Premiere. Um, I mean, if they added transparencies in there, this could be a pretty big deal. It will also do image to video as well, which I guess kind of makes sense considering that, you know, well, Adobe's always been pretty good about subject detection. And I know like you look at this like fire one and you might be a little bit mid on it, but you know, you could always just generate up a couple more layers of fire and comp them all together. And I think that you will end up with something pretty compelling. I do think that this ends up a pretty big deal if nothing more then we we just might be seeing a lot more video generators with more robust in painting tools because again this one is totally open source the code is available down below next up once again from adobe is facelift single image to 3d head so facelift will take a image of a human face and turn it into essentially a 3d representation utilizing gaussian splatting so i will say that we have seen this kind of thing done before sorry i'm not great with the controls here they're kind of a little bit on the wonky side, um, but you know, there's a pretty impressive amount of detail in uh, this iteration. Facelift actually does have a few other tricks up its sleeve though. One, Facelift can take input video and turn it into 4D. And while look, I know that the outputs look a little bit on the unstable side right now. I mean, like just think about that for a second. Like this guy is thinking about it and his mind is definitely blown. And well, again, I know that the outputs look, you know, fairly unstable. Personally, it's an aesthetic that I actually think is kind of cool. But I think that given everything that we've seen here today, the potential for all of this is pretty big. I mean, anything from just like shooting an actor's performance against a wall and then transporting them and reskinning them anywhere, or I mean, even hologram technology. Which, yeah, I know, still sounds weird to say, but I mean, it's coming. Uh, the other kind of cool thing is that facelift can be used in, you know, conjunction with something like live portrait. And you can take uh, clearly, you know, an AI generated character here, apply live portrait animations to them, and then you essentially have 3D animation with them. Swinging over to some quick hits. Uh, earlier this week, we took a look at Minimax's new subject reference. So yeah, like two days ago, it was in beta. I just want you to know uh, it is now available to everyone. And in just like the last two days since I first looked at it, uh, the version that you will be getting has better facial expressions, more natural lighting, and uh, actually Minimax has said that in the works will be multi-character consistency along with uh, object consistency as well. In the meantime, you can head over to Minimax and just start playing around with it. Quick sneaky update and runaway, uh, you can now actually upscale to 4K in Gen 3. Not really a lot to report on this one other than the fact that you, know, you can now upscale to 4K uh, in that it's not doing anything creative on top of that. It's just doing like a straight upscale uh, on your output video, which I know is something that a lot of you very much prefer. So this does only seem to work with your Gen 3 outputs. I did go back to check to see if you could do it in Gen 2, but uh, you know, no dice there. Sliding over to Korea, uh, they have now added in the Hunyan model, uh, the Kling 1.6 model, and Minimax's 01 Live model, um, and added in MM Audio, so you can actually generate audio right on platform. 
So just giving it a quick shot, utilizing the Hunyan model, uh, I took a prompt that was inspired by the now infamous uh, jogging lady Hunyan uh, example. Um, so after we have this, I, I accidentally generated it in 916, but uh, all we have to do is add sound here um, and it just, it starts generating sound for it. I mean, she does have a bit of a lead foot there, but I mean, it is accurate to picture. What I've actually found to be a ton of fun is, you know, when you get those like weird decoherent outputs, yeah, add sound to those. It makes it extra funny. The great thing about this being on Kriya is that even those of you on the free plan uh, can try this out, although obviously your outputs are going to be uh, limited. I think it's somewhere around six is what I'd heard. So that's it for today. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.